Lord, everyone. So good to see each and every one of you here tonight. I'm so thankful to be in his house just one more time. Uh, if you are a visitor with us tonight, we want to welcome you. Thank you for choosing us to worship with tonight. Uh, if you all will, go ahead and be standing. We're uh, going to go uh, real quick in a word of prayer. Let's remember all of our needs that we have upon the board. And let's also remember these few that I have before me. Uh, Sister Abernathy, which is uh, my wife's grandmother. She has not received a very good report today, but you know we're trusting and believing in God in that situation to move on her behalf. Let's also remember Brother Aaron Lee's family. Uh, his mother uh, passed away this week. We are so uh, terribly sorry about that and so saddened, and uh, we mourn with him over that, but uh, the funeral arrange arrangements is going to be uh, at 1 o'clock. I believe it's going to be on Friday at Corinthian uh, Funeral Home. The visitation will start at 11 on Friday, also up until the funeral. Let's remember Sister Jean Hopkins, uh, the Markles, Sister Haitley, and Sister Rogers. Let's also remember Doug Mullins and Debbie Worsham, and my father-in-law, Jeff Moss, uh, Sister Natalie Cantrell. And let's also remember Brother Evan Gibbons uh, tonight. Uh, we might have a lot of needs tonight, but you know, I know a God that hears every one of them. As I was in the prayer room, I was reminded of Psalms 121, verse 1. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And then it goes to verse 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. I'm so thankful that I serve a mighty God tonight that is never going to slumber. He's never going to fail us tonight. Whatever the problem might be, He hears us. He's always open to our problems tonight. But let's go to the word of prayer tonight and take all these needs. God, we come before you tonight on this wonderful night that you have blessed us with. God, we ask that your presence enter in into this sanctuary, God. I ask that you look down upon every situation tonight, God, every request that we have made known tonight to you. And God, even the unspoken request, God, you see all the needs tonight in the house, Lord. God, we just want to thank you most of all for the day that you have blessed us with to worship your name just one more time. God, we ask that you let your presence be in this house tonight, God, and move upon each and every one of us, Lord. And God, we just ask that your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If Brother Gene Sanders would be making his way, he's going to sing a congregational for us tonight. Let's get behind him tonight and worship the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Isn't it good to be in church tonight? Lots of other places you could have been, but you chose to come and be in church. That says a lot. I'm so glad to see you. I'd rather be here than the finest hospital in the country. What about y'all? Maybe the pretty cemetery. Have you ever seen a pretty cemetery? I don't believe I've ever seen a pretty cemetery. I don't even like to look that way when I pass them by on the road. Just <laughs> look straight ahead. I'm going to sing this old song. Hey, how many here tonight know this old song? Just over in the glory land. For those of you that don't, we got the words. Congregational singing means you and you and you and you this is not a solo i'll kind of lead you out and then i want y'all to really sing i'm gonna hear you i'm gonna be able to hear you will you help me i've a home prepared
in the glory land. Uh, Sister Amber Helm, if she'll be making her way, she's going to sing us a special. I almost failed to mention we're so thankful to have Sister Amy Austin back in church with us tonight. We're so thankful that God kept his hands on her last week as she went through her procedure. And we're, we're glad that she's back in service with us tonight. Let's worship with Sister Amber as she sings. I'm so thankful that even when I deal with those doubts tonight that the world tries to fill my head with you know whatever the world thinks about me it doesn't matter tonight just like that song says I'm so thankful that all that matters to me now is what the Lord thinks of me so when the world is trying to fill my head with all this garbage saying that I'm not enough the Lord is telling me the right opposite 
And he's telling me, son, you are enough tonight. And I'm so thankful that God has a different perspective towards me than this world does. Let's worship with the worship team.
Praise the Lord. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. Come on, can we show them how thankful we are for that tonight? Let's, if you will, tonight with me say, I am yours. Come on, let's not be afraid to admit it tonight. God, I am yours. Are you thankful that he set you free tonight? I'm so thankful for what I feel tonight in this house. We're going to uh, change the order of service here. If the men of music will uh, play us a musical and the children, they can be dismissed to their classrooms. They take three instruments and make it sound like a full-fledged band, can't they? Amen. Could you do it one more time, fellas? say thank you Jesus aren't you glad to be alive Did, had you ever thought about 100 years ago I don't care how rich you were you couldn't buy an air conditioned automobile the automobile was new it didn't matter how much money you might have had you couldn't have had an electric toothbrush nobody had ever heard of one of them amen you know we, we have made a lot of advancements and things have happened in man's favor and in our favor. And if we we'll remain thankful for all of these advancements that we've got, we can use them for the delight of man and the glory of God. He giveth us all things richly to enjoy. But you know, we could get kind of stuck up and high headed and lose every bit of it. But I'm so thankful that God has blessed America, that he's blessed the world, that we have the advancements that we have. Amen. Not only, well, you know, I remember reading an article in the Memphis uh, Commercial Appeal. Now, it was an older article. I happened to work at this place, not in the garage, but uh, at this place is the reason I saw the article. And I saw it in the 60s, but in 1952, Memphis had the first 
air-conditioned automobile garage there was anywhere in the South. Mr. Walls, I worked for Mr. Walls. I pulled nut grass out of his yard. I didn't get to work. I worked at his service station too, but I, I didn't get to work in that air-conditioned automobile garage, but it was connected to his Exxon station there on the corner of Highland and Southern Avenue in Memphis, Tennessee. Very wealthy man, but he passed it along into his employees. They did very well, and God blessed him and brought him a long way. And, you know, he didn't put a dam in the river. He just opened the floodgates up and let things pass on down. God has been good to us, folks. Amen. No matter where you are socially, I see you in church tonight with clothes on your back, and you probably got a good warm place to sleep. The Bible said, with food and raiment, therewith be content. God's been good to us. If you're wondering, well, what am I going to give thanks for? Let me remind you of a verse of Scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It said, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Amen. God's will is for you in everything to give thanks. Thanks. You can be seated if you'd like to. Let me, let me mention a, a story in the Bible that is, is such a real story until if you read it and you read it intensely, I can guarantee you you'll almost tremble while you're reading it. There was a group of men, 276 men on board one ship. They were headed for Rome. They hadn't got very far until there was a storm. And during that storm, it looked like every life was going to be lost. In fact, every hope that they ever had of being saved was taken away. For 14 days, they didn't see any sun, moon, or stars, and no man ate a bite. They were fasting. They were, they were pleading with God to save their souls. And on the 14th day of that fast, the ship was setting steel. They had anchored it during the night because they were afraid they are going to fall on rocks. And while it was waiting on day, the apostle Paul stepped out on deck of the ship with some bread and he broke that bread, gave thanks to God. Gave thanks to God. Amen. You might say, well, why would you thank God in a situation like that? He, he knew that the blessings of God was there with them. And he turned to those men and said, there's not one hair going to fall from any of your heads. He said, take something and eat it because you've been fasting for 14 days and this is for your health. And when daylight come, that ship broke itself to pieces on the rocks and the waves scattered the pieces around. But there wasn't a man lost a hair from his head. I can guarantee you that. Every one of them got out of that ocean alive. They warmed themselves by fire that the natives on that island built. In everything, give thanks. Amen. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. I've, I've never been marooned on an island like that. I've never faced 14 days of, of uh, such deep sorrow and heartache and, and despair, but I've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. I have been through some times, and I'm very thankful that God brought me through them. But I've had some good times in my life, and I'm thankful tonight. I bless his name. First Thessalonians, again, tells us rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Quench not the spirit. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of, Christ, of God in Christ. Jesus concerning you, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. A lot of instructions there. Stacked right in the middle of it, he said, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. I'm very thankful tonight to be able to stand before you and bless my God. I'm very thankful that I'm alive tonight. I haven't fallen somewhere by the wayside and got caught in the snare of the devil in my life, taken from me because sin had finished with my life. I'm thankful tonight that I'm not somewhere locked away in an insane asylum or even worse. I'm thankful tonight that God has been good to me down through the years and brought me thus far. Hallelujah. We have a number of folks that's going to give thanks tonight, and I'm going to ask Sister Summer Bircham to come and, first of all, and give thanks for whatever she feels like. I'm going to tell you, no limit on this, folks. In everything, give thanks. Everything. That just that unlimits every one of us, unchanges.
Well, praise the Lord, church. Um, I'm not really good at getting up in front of people and talking. Well, I do it every day at work, but up here. So <laughs> um, I'm going to start off by saying that um, I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost and being saved at the age of 10. Um, I received the Holy Ghost at a really young age, so it kept me from a lot of heartaches and a lot of addictions that have tarnished a lot of young people that are my age and have still not found their way back to God. So for that, I'm thankful for the keeping power of God. Um, second, I'm so thankful that the Lord gave me a godly husband that leads and guides me in the truth daily. He's always there for everything that I need, and I'm forever grateful for this. Um, thirdly, my family is everything to me. Um, in this past year, the Lord has kept my grandmother through open heart surgery and my dad through a major surgery, and I'm believing that he will continue to be with my dad and my other grandmother in the next couple weeks. I'm also thankful for my mother because not only did she um, raise me in church, there was never an option if I came to church. Um, if I had a headache, I still came to church. If I had a stomach ache, I still came to church. Um, if there was a youth outing, I still went to church. Sister Andrea was talking the other day and was saying it's kind of a different generation now where it was back then. We were made to come. I mean, it didn't matter what was going on at church. It didn't matter if we was cleaning the parking lot. We were here. Um, so I'm thankful for that because if it wasn't for my mother, I have no clue where I would be. Um, and also my church and my church family and Brother Josh and Sister Adrian. They've always been there for me, um, no matter what's been going on in my life, to give me the best advice. Also to Brother Hodum and Sister Hodum before Brother Josh and Sister Adrian came along. Um, I'm also thankful to have a good job that allows me to work with my church schedule. Um, I can ask my boss at any time if there's something that needs to be going on at church. She allows me to go do that. And I'm just forever thankful for all these things that the Lord has blessed me with. Um, but, you know, being thankful is not just a season of Thanksgiving or the month of November, but the, po the Bible tells us to be thankful in everything. So I'm just thankful that I was allowed to get up here and tell y'all what I'm thankful for. I thought she'd done a mighty good job of standing up in front of folks talking, didn't you? Amen. I think we ought to be thankful for summer. I am. I appreciate her. And you know, uh, to you and to Brother Levi too, if y'all every day just keep thanking God for your husband and your wife, that'll settle a lot of the problems that could have cropped up in a marriage. Every day, be thankful to God. Amen. Brother Chris Hughes, I'd like for him to come. And you know, you, you'd look around and you'd say, well, this man's got a lot to be thankful for. If you look a little closer, you have too. Amen. Brother Chris, come right on. Praise the Lord. Whew, boy. Uh, Brother Josh texted me Tuesday morning and asked me what I want to do. I was like, I started thinking about all the things God has blessed me with. I just began to cry at work because um, he's really done a number. Um, and as the day went on, I couldn't think of what I was going to say. And I'm like, man, really? Did I, did I say I'd do that? But uh, anyways, I'm thankful for my pastor, my bishop. Um, you know, when, when we first come to church here, my bishop, he's got so much knowledge that I couldn't really keep up with him whenever he was preaching, but now I, I can't wait until he gets up there. Um, when I come, when we started the church, my name was Les. Yes, yeah, yes. I was jobless. I was rideless. I was hopeless. I was worthless. Um, I, it, but God, God, what's, what's the song that they sang? Love came down and rescued me. Yeah. Now I'm blessed. Now my name is blessed. Oh, God's done a number. He's talking about rides. He's talking about rides. I was in that day of the rideless. Everybody else had a ride, but I didn't. But now God has blessed me with two nice cars. And it, it, it's not the material things, but God didn't put us on this earth. Everything that I am and everything that I have, it's not mine. It's God's. God give it to me. It's just a loner. Amen. It's just a loner. It's not mine. We're not put on this earth to be a Chris. We're not put on this earth to be a Levi, to be a Tanner. 
We're put on this earth to be a vessel, a vessel of God. And that's what our problem, that's what we're supposed to be. I sit up in that class, and I see them people come in with that heartaches. I see them come in confused, looking for hope. And all I can do is lift my hands and say, thank you, God. I don't know why you've done it for me, but you did. I was worthless, but you did it for me. You can, you're, he's no respecter of persons. You hear it all the time. God's no respecter of persons. The devil's no respecter of persons neither. I just want to thank God each and every day. I, mm, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I, every day I'm in the prayer room, I'm thanking God, as long as there's breath in this body, let me be a vessel. As long as there's breath in this body, let me praise you. Let me lift up your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Lord, I'm about to... Whew. Anyways, uh, but I'm, I'm thankful for God, the deliverance God has put in my family. Um, our kids are moving in one after another. We've got another one talking about wanting to move in, and I ain't got no room to put them. But God makes a way. Huh? God can make a way. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Um, anybody in this house that's, that's, that's been in church all their lives and not had the scars, the battle scars of this world, I want you to stand up and give God praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. You guys that's you guys that's lived through it, give God some praise. Hallelujah. We've got a good God. I don't know if y'all serve the same God I live. I serve, but I serve a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the Bible teaches us about Thanksgiving. It's 70 something times thanks just the word thanks is 70 something times in the bible now time you put thanksgiving and thankful and different variations of the word thanks you're going to have hundreds of times in the bible but the bible said be thankful and bless his name hallelujah i want my wife to come because she does a good job of blessing his name praise god and you know she's got a lot to be thankful for too and we, we look back across a life of blessings. We have lived on God's blessings for year after year after year. All right. Praise the Lord. I have a few minutes. I don't think I'm as short as they are, so I'm going to get with it. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story, then I'm going to tell you why I'm thankful. Years ago, when my kids were small, my mother had a stroke. And I was unable to come because they were in school. And I was the only one that had small children at the time. And she had had a stroke eight months before that. And this time when she had a stroke, she was totally paralyzed on her left side. And they told me, they said, well, within 14 days, she'll have another one, major stroke, and she'll die. But I, I didn't know that till I came down. I was able to come on the 10th day and bring the children to stay with Grandmother Hodum, and I stayed at the hospital. Well, when I got there, they began to tell me the situation and that she was going to moan and groan all night long. She couldn't talk. She was totally paralyzed on her left side. You had to take your finger and get her food out. It was just a terrible situation. And uh, I went out. Back then, you only told what you could because the phones were in the room. But I talked to Brother Hodum from the hall after they told me in the waiting room how critical the situation was. They said, Mama, this is the 10th day. And they said, within 14 days, she'll die. I said, well, Brother Hodum, I called him. I said, now you pray. I don't think I can handle this. If I'm here by myself, you've got to pray for me because the Lord can move. Well, anyway, I went back in the room, took my mother by the hand, and I, I told her, I said, Mama, I always get down and pray on my knees before I go to bed. Can I pray with you? And, of course, she just shook her head yes. And I got down beside her bed, and I prayed. Well, the night before at church, and the Lord had blessed me. Now, I don't want y'all to think I'm crazy. I'm not. You that know me know I'm not, but I'm a little off. But I had seen a being at church. I did not see the being as looking at Brother. Uh, okay, I know his name. I can't think. <laughs> brother Ben right now. But I knew the being was there. And I told the people, I said, there's an angel standing here. And if you need something from God, come up and shake hands with him. And they would come by, and some of them would shake hands, go dancing off, and they'd go doing this and that and the other. And, but nevertheless, the angel was there. But I didn't get to see him face to face. Well, when I came down the next day, and I prayed with my mother, there was a cot in the room, and I laid down on that cot, 
and I didn't sleep. It was four o'clock the last time I looked at the clock, but I saw beings. And they told me mama would moan and groan and I would think she was dying and she would be having extensions of the stroke and she would turn red here and red here and, and she would just, you know, she would not rest. I saw those beings come into the room and they had something like a, a, a poke, a, a probe to poke and they were poking at my mama. And you know what I was doing? I said, in the name of Jesus, you ain't got no business in this room with me. And I kept rebuking them until four o'clock in the morning. Now I'm telling y'all the truth. And when my mother woke up the next morning, she said, honey, she could talk. She said, honey, I don't know what's happened, but I've had the best rest I've had since I've been here. She didn't moan and she didn't groan all night long. I saw those spirits. They were coming in there and a lot, I'm saying that to tell you this. Sometimes we put up with things we don't have to. The devil will come at you in every manner he can, but you don't have to put up with some of that. I know we're getting old, we're going to have problems, but some of that we don't have to. But I want you to know, my mother didn't die in two or three days. She went home and lived most of the time for the next 18 or 19 years by herself. Can you thank God for that? Now, I said all that to say this. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost above everything in my life. Because without it, I would have been powerless that night. I would have been powerless. But God don't give us the Holy Ghost just for me. He gave it to me for my family. He gave it to me for my church family. So that I can stand in the hedge and make up the gap. When you get the Holy Ghost, it's not just for you. It's for whoever is around you. That you might pray and intervene for them. Oh, I know you're not going to win them all. I wish I could. It's not going to happen. But I'm telling you, the greatest thing that's ever come to in my life is the Holy Ghost, the gift of God. And he told us and to, to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. It's just like Brother Chris said, hey, it ain't us. It's the Lord. Or I wouldn't be here today. Is my time up? Okay, one minute. <laughs> I, won't, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I'm just saying this to say, folks, the greatest thing that I can give thanks for, God has blessed me. You all know he's blessed me with a fine family. I appreciate it. Things could be better. Things could be worse in everybody's family, but I'm thankful. God has sent me so many things through the years I could not tell it all. I can't praise him enough. I can't give thanks enough. But every day I'm caught trying. Every day I'm caught trying. Well, you know, I kind of wish that we could hear that old song. That is why I'm thankful. That's why I sing and shout. I've got something in my heart that I can shout about. I'm thankful for God's blessings upon my life. And really... You know, when you, when you do, it, it's already been said, it's not the material things, but these are added blessings. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Amen. When we put God first, it's amazing how our world turns around. Because he's got to be first, and we've got to be following him, and then the whole world has to fall into place. Amen. Brother Jason Gurley. Brother Hodum come up to me earlier. He said, you know you're on the docket. And I gave him one of these numbers. I said, no. He said, well, you better get ready anyway. Of course, I was just kidding. Um, you know, you don't really realize how important the pulpit is. It's a place of honor. Um, you get these people that are willing to share their testimony, but it can be a scary place up here behind the pulpit. Once you get here, it tends to be a place where you lose your thought. You can have it all planned out. You know, you can have it ready. I'm going to hit it here. And when you get up here, it just, it leaves you. So, you know, you don't understand how hard it is for some people to get up here behind the pulpit and share with you. You know, this month is going to be a month of Thanksgiving, so really tune into these people. You may have to get past some emotion at first, you know. 
some people get jitters, you know, just a little scared. So just, you know, move along with it. Um, there's one thing I'm thankful for, and it may not hold a lot of weight to a lot of people, but I'm thankful to be able to stand behind this pulpit again. It's one thing that I thought that I was never going to be able to do again. Um, I've got up here multiple times. I've preached behind this pulpit. I've sat under the anointing behind this pulpit. And each year I've got up here, I've told you the same thing. You know, I'm thankful for being saved, everything before Christ. Um, and I'm still thankful for those things. But this past year alone has taught me a lot. You know, it was, it was about this time last year after I just spoke on being thankful. I think I hit one of the lowest points in my life that I could hit. By December 31st, I decided it wasn't worth it, and I walked out those doors. I never thought in a million years that I would be behind this pulpit again. I never thought in a million years I'd find another altar. But I went through this stage, and I had no desire whatsoever to be in church. I'll be honest with you, I was, I was kind of talking to some buddies one day, and uh, I decided, okay, well, you know, I'm going to go back. You know, if you're not going to be in church, you might as well do everything you can. And I got a message on Facebook, and I don't think that I've ever thanked her for it, but it meant a lot to me at the time. I was just sitting there, and I'd made up my mind, you know, that I was never going to live for God again. And Sister Karen messaged me on Facebook, and all she said was, your worship and your prayer life has been an inspiration for me. I thank you, Sister Karen, because if it wasn't for that, I would have never made my way back to an altar. That was the pivotal point in my life that made me want to live for God. You know, it doesn't matter. People tell you the anointing will hold you and everything. I told you I've stood behind this pulpit. I've preached under the anointing. I've lived the word of God. But sometimes you need more than that. You need a support group around you. I'm super thankful for the people in this church. People didn't even realize I was going through anything. I would walk in these churches and I've had people from Brother Haley to just catch me and talk to me. I've had Brother Joe catch and talk to me. You know, and they didn't realize that I was struggling, but I was. You don't realize how much a kind word can touch somebody. I'm thankful for God's promises. I'm thankful that he can look at somebody and he can say, even though you've messed up, I'm not discarding you, son. You still have a purpose. You still have a passion. My gifts are without repentance. There's still a spot for you in my kingdom. I'm thankful for his mercies. Without his mercies, you know, without his grace, I wouldn't be able to stand behind this pulpit. Every day isn't easy. That's for sure. You can look at me and you can tell that I'm still on my way back. You know, I'm not who I used to be. I'm not the same preacher I used to be. But with God, you know, with his thankfulness, there's a different demeanor about me. You know, there's a different passion about me now. And I'm thankful that God can reach in and he can touch you. He may have to just break you down like he did me. But I'm telling you that he will keep you. Thank you. Amen. Very touching, folks. I wish you would just stand right now. I want you to look around at somebody that's near you. And you remember what he has just said. Sister Karen had sent him a text message, was it? And now then he's thankful because that was one of the things that turned his life back toward God. I'd like you to look at somebody and say, I thank God for you. Come on. Just, now look at somebody else and say, I thank God for you, brother. Or I thank God for you, sister. Amen. Hallelujah. We are more than just a church. We're referred to as the family of God. More than one occasion. You can be seated again if you'd like. I also wanted to remember what the Apostle Paul said, and uh, Brother Jason made me think of it. I believe it was to the Corinthians. He said that he wanted to come to them a second time, that he may impart some spiritual gift unto them to the end or for this end, for this cause, that they might be established. So that it takes some of us helping others of us 
to be established in the Lord. You, you, it's, it's hard to know what a blessing you are to somebody else. Really, I don't want everybody to fully know what a blessing you, you might get stuck up. But sometimes their very life depends on you and your actions, your love and your kindness, your acceptance and your compassion. That word compassion is such a big word. I mean, it, it's not just love. Compassion, you know, we, we think of charity as being love in action, and that's what has been termed. Do you remember when Jesus walked out and saw that multitude of 5,000 men besides the women and children? The Bible said he had compassion on them. Compassion put him to work. Compassion caused him to feed them, keep them from fainting by the wayside. Compassion puts us to work for somebody else, causes us to help them in ways that they normally would not even find help. We're going to uh, have just a, a few more minutes. It'll be spontaneous. But I wonder if somebody right now would like to stand to your feet and tell us why you're thankful. Had a sister go right ahead. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You know, you can search high and low and it's going to be hard to find anybody go through the trauma that uh, Sister Haley has gone through and have the attitude that she's had through it all and still has it today. I thank God for Sister Haley, don't you? Yes. Amen. Somebody else, you want to just give a spontaneous Thanksgiving tonight? Amen. We want to hear it. Hallelujah. Go right ahead, brother. All right. All right. You know, I thought of something while he was testifying. I was talking to people before what I did before Mother's Day and before Father's Day. And I was getting them uh, a little for taste or telling them what we were going to do. I asked one lady, I said, would you like to talk to us about your mother? I didn't know her mother. And she quickly said no. And she said, Mother's Day is always the saddest day in my life. She said, my mother left our family when I was eight years old, walked off and left a house full of kids with my daddy. And she said, it's not a happy day for me. 
Well, I felt bad that I had asked her, but then on the other hand, I got thinking, she probably needed to get that out. I'm not, I'm not going to be psychological, but you know, sometimes we need to just talk about things a little bit and, and get rid of it. And uh, it made me very thankful for my childhood. It made me look back with thanksgiving from then on for my childhood and for my mother. And I'm sorry that, because she, she's done, going on to meet her reward now, but I'm, I'm sorry that she didn't have a good childhood. But many of you had an excellent childhood. And I, I look back on David in the scripture, and you remember uh, the life of David, and you, you can relate to this. Probably, this is a probability, understand this. David was excellent with a sling, you know that. But somewhere he had to get that skill. I mean, you know, God can do anything he wants to for you, but most of the time, if you're going to be really good at something, you're going to have to practice. I mean, God gives us the ability to do it. I, I've pictured David as he was out in the yard slinging stones from a lad on up. And just slinging. I had a had a first cousin that could just sit out in the driveway with his rifle and just pitch up rocks like that and bust them with his rifle. I mean, just now he wouldn't let you throw it up. It was in his timing. He could do it every time. Just throw that rock up and he didn't miss. He just throw his rifle up and shoot it and bust the rock wide open. But I seen him on the same day he had put on a show for us miss a squirrel with a shotgun. So I mean, you know it. It wasn't that he was just so skilled, but he was practiced. He was skilled at what he was doing. It, you just don't bet on another man's tricks. But I can picture David out slinging stones, and maybe after a while he turned that sling stone toward the house and or even bouncing it off of something in the yard until his mother stuck her head out the door and said, Son, quit that. You're driving me crazy. Or maybe that harp. You ever hear a fiddle play that somebody couldn't play the fiddle? I mean, I love good fiddle music, don't you? Can you imagine what it'd be like with a little boy just learning to play a harp? I heard a, a preacher one time say that his daddy bought him a fiddle when he was little. And he said, I'd sit around on the couch and I was trying to play that fiddle and said, all I was doing was scratching the strings and it was sounding terrible. But he said, to me, it was music, but it wasn't anybody else. He said, after a while, my mama said, get that thing out in the yard. He said, I thought fiddles was yard instruments. <laughs> and what, what really is intriguing to some of us is not to others, but God put the practice in David, made a great man out of him, not only with a harp, not only with a sling, but a combination of the two. He, he could kill giants or drive devils off. I'm, I'm just telling you, God just used him tremendously. And no doubt he went through some hardships to get there and much practice. But when you look back across your life, aren't you thankful for the opportunities that God has given you? Amen. You, you may not be some great author and your name in light somewhere, no actor and your name in lights there or any other of the great famous heroes in the world but if you're a good dad to your children, good mother to your children, a good wife to your husband, or a good husband to your wife, yeah, that's, I said that right, didn't I? Yeah. You, I'm going to tell you, you're a hero. Amen. Because some of those folks that have really made the headlines and the highlights don't have a family. I want us to stand and thank God for our family tonight. I want us to really, from our heart, be thankful for our opportunities. If I were to talk to some of you, and I, I mean, I know some of your situations that really has not always been pretty. If I was to talk to some of you, you could probably tell me stories that was as bad as that sister who said, Mother's Day is the saddest day of my year. I dread to see it coming. She had no fond memories of childhood. But I still remember the song that... Uh, the singing governor of Louisiana song about the fondest memories of his childhood was around supper time when mother would call from the back steps of the old home place. Come on home, Jimmy. 
it's supper time. Anybody remember that old song? Make you cry when you was a little boy. Come on home, Jimmy. It's supper time. He said, oh, I'd love to hear those words once more. David got to be an old man or much older. Responsibilities were everywhere around him. He was hiding and running for his life. And in a cave one day, he thought of them childhood days. And he said, oh, that one would give me a drink of the water from the well at the gate of Bethlehem. Bethlehem's where he was raised. Bethlehem's where he had all the training that he had as a child. And he remembered those carefree, barefoot days of running the streets of Bethlehem, carrying a bucket of water back to the home. I wished I could be back there again. You can't go back to those days, but you can have that carefree moment again if you'll just turn everything over to God. Let God be God. Hallelujah. Be thankful that he's the master of your life and turn your situations over to him. You know, three men felt enough of what David was feeling until they heard him say that and broke through a garrison of Philistines and drew water out of the well at the gate of Bethlehem and brought it back to David. And he said, this would be like drinking a man's blood. I can't do this. It wasn't the water that he wanted. It was those memories of childhood and what it was that made him what he is now. Folks, I'm telling you, you and I have got a lot to be thankful for. Now, I'm gonna thank God for my childhood. If yours was not pleasant enough, you can thank God for bringing you out of it, letting you live to get grown. You can find something to be thankful for. Your past is what brought you here tonight. Your past is what made you are where you are tonight. So let's all give thanks, would you? Dear God, I am so thankful for the things that you allowed to transpire in my life. Thank you, Lord, for every crevice, every tight place, Everything, Lord, that you allowed my life to go through and the rescue that you brought to me, the present help in the times of trouble. Thank you, Lord, for a good mother and a good father. Thank you, God, that you brought me through the early parts of my life and set my feet upon a rock, established my goings. Lord, ever shortcoming and ever failure, I'm sorry for tonight. But I'm asking you for the leadership and the guidance of God to carry me further. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, dear God, for all of your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you just look around, you've got something to be thankful for because you're in everything that you're in, in everything. Give thanks. Amen. I'm glad you're here tonight. And this is our first uh, Wednesday night in November. We will be having Thanksgiving throughout uh, November. Our Thanksgiving meal is going to be on November the 18th, and I'm thankful for that. Have you ever been at a Thanksgiving meal in the Gospel Tabernacle? Is anybody here that has never been here for a Thanksgiving meal? You're in for one of the grandest treats and, uh, uh, well, it, one of the best feedings you'll ever find. It'll be November the 18th. That'll be on Sunday night before Thanksgiving, and we're going to come and have a feast. I, I moved here in November.